Welcome, everyone. A few days ago, I was watching one of Simon Dan's latest videos called How Many People on Earth Again? And he mentioned the content creator. So I took a look at this person's channel and, well, how about I let Simon Dan tell you all about it? Well, here we are. Another new year. Another new conspiracy theorist. And boy, have we got a live one. He subscribes to everything. Flat Earth, chemtrails, evolution denying, nuclear weapon denying, dinosaurs never existed, moon landing hoax, and even sunglasses can cause cancer. With a list like that, it makes you wonder what we could be possibly talking about today. We are talking about Terra Times. Thank you, Simon Dan. I took a look at this channel and found this lovely video about the women of the ISS. So I decided to give them my own brand of attention. What's even more ridiculous about them filming spacewalks in a water pool and spacewalks are impossible is that the women for the hoax perm their hair. So it's ridiculous that spacewalks are filmed in pools, spacewalks are impossible, and women that go to the ISS have permed hair. Check. Here she's in front of a blue screen and the background is not moving. The cable is completely still. And in real life, there would be airflow in the space station. The space station would be making adjustments that would not stay fixated. Fixated? Those cables are not obsessively attached to the walls. I think it should be fixed or affixed to the walls. It's just a screenshot and they just put it in the background. It's blue screen and her hair is permed for this ridiculous hoax. And of course you know this for a fact. I mean it's not like women perm or curl their hair on earth. That would be silly. This is a video that I made about the absurdity with their hairdos. They perm their hair it's ridiculous. Their hair stays fixated. The public doesn't notice that their hair is permed. And yeah, the women are completely ridiculous on the space station. So, the women of the space station are ridiculous. Huh. Okay. I'll let you dig a hole. Then when you're in it, I'll fill it in. In zero G, the hair is moving through air. It, uh, it behaves like hair moving through air. It does not say fixated into position. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. And uh, yet, when you watch them on the International Space Station and you look at their hair, it always stays into in a particular position relative to their head. And it doesn't flop around naturally like it's supposed to. And here is Perm Lady Head. I mean, look at her. She looks like Medusa. She looks like she has fixated snakes coming out of her head. It's permed like that. Here and be pretty relaxed. Everybody has a hand. Here's another idiot. Her hair is completely fixated. It's a perm. <laughs> it always springs back into that particular position. It's ludicrous. I mean, look at this idiot. She must be a Freemason or something. Because sometimes that's who they get to do these hoaxes. They're sworn to secrecy. Permed lady head? She looks like Medusa with fixated snakes coming out of her head? Idiot? Freemason? Never mind about that floating necklace, right? Or the fact that you keep using the word fixated wrong. That hole is getting pretty deep. Okay. Okay, I think it's time for a little time out. I could use a breather. Let's take a little break from your video, Terra Times, and watch a clip from a video of mine. The original video I used is called One of the Most Detailed ISS Tour, three exclamation points, and contains a 41 minute continuous shot of astronaut Steven Swanson floating in and out of rooms on the ISS. My clip shows three minutes and seven seconds of him and could only have been done on the actual ISS in space 
not in a zero-G plane, on the ground in a water pool, or in a Hollywood basement. In the following clip from the video, one of the most detailed ISIS tour, you will see astronaut Steven Swanson giving a tour. Here is what the zero-G plane looks like on the runway and on the inside. However, you will see that the International Space Station is much different as it consists of various long tubes connected to one another with alcoves and rooms coming off the sides of it. So from here, if we go starboard, we go into the airlock. If again, if you look on here, it's just starboard. That right there is the airlock, and there's two parts to the airlock. The closest part to us, which would be this part right here, is called the equipment lock, and the most starboard part is called the crew lock. And the crew lock is where you actually go out of when you do a spacewalk. It's what actually depresses down the vacuum, and that's where you open the hatch. So we come in here. This is now into the equipment lock right here. And the idea of the equipment lock, of course, is where the equipment is. And then it's also where the suits are, and this is where we actually suit up. And we have these little structures right here that the suits are on. And they're called ADAS, which is an acronym. And I don't even know what it stands for, but it's an acronym, E-D-D-A. Uh, but that's where the suits are on. And we actually have them on here uh, to, when we get in, we can pop off basically the pants, put the pants on, and we climb up in here with the helmet off, and we get on in the suit, and we're all ready to go. Uh, the person who's helping us get the suit up will take us off and stick us in to the crew lock over here, which again right now it was full of a bunch of stuff. And then once I, once, but that would be empty, of course, for a national spacewalk. We close this hatch right here and uh, depress this part now to vacuum and open the hatch it's down that way is where the hatch is where you open. And you can see there's all sorts of equipment we have. This is good in storage right now because we're not going to do a spacewalk for a little bit. So we just have it more stowed right now for everything on the, on the spacewalk side. And that is unfortunate. Are you sure to eat me? <laughs> <laughs> if you go down from here, which would be Nader, in our speak, it's hard to show on this guy because you really can't see it. So basically we're at the lab and then we're going down towards Earth. If you look at it that way, so it doesn't really show it on here because it's blocked by the uh, Node 2. But if you go down right here, so we would be going from Node 1 down to Nader. This is actually called the PMM. And that's really us too, is a big stowage area. What we have down here is just pure stowage. That's what it's for. And we have all our uh, supplies, food, extra equipment, other stuff like that that we need to have for months on board in case another vehicle doesn't come to resupply us we need all a bunch of bunch of equipment. So you can kind of look at that and see that that's just a bunch of storage area. It's also where we keep our trash. You know, we just can't throw the trash out on the curb every week up here. So we have to keep it. And last time when uh, Cygnus left, it had about, uh, we had about 25 bags worth of trash that we threw out. And the bags are pretty good sized bags. They're like big, think of big hefty bags of trash that we threw out on Cygnus. Uh, so uh, that's where we have to keep that. Besides our new stuff, we have to also keep trash down there too. And cue the plugging of the ears and the closing of the eyes in three, two, one. La 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 la, you're so stupid, you're so retarded, la la la. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Now back to Radical's Dungeon with you. Okay, break time is over. Now back to the video. Hi there. I've had a lot of people ask me how I wash my hair in space, and I thought I'd, I'd show you how I do it. Let's see. To get started, these are the things I need. A bag of warm water, a little no-rinse shampoo, towel, and my comb. What I like to do is start by just putting some hot water, squirting it onto my scalp. First, astronaut Karen Nyberg does not have permed hair. And second, that noise is not from a jet engine. Why don't we let astronaut Samantha Cristoferodi explain what we are actually hearing as she shows us how fingernails are clipped on the space station. 
Cutting your fingernails is not the easiest thing in, uh, in weightlessness. Of course, you, um, you don't want to lose any pieces of nails uh, around the cabin. So um, the best thing is actually to do it really close to a um, return grid of the ventilation system so that uh, all the pieces of nails that you cut off um, get immediately attracted, um, sucked towards the grid, um, kind of like this. There you go. And then when you're done, of course, you want to have uh, a vacuum cleaner handy so that you can uh, clean after yourself. It is the air intake for the ventilation system you are hearing, not jet engines. Oh, by the way, did you take a look at Samantha's hair? Obviously, not a perm. And I have a mirror here so I can kind of watch what I'm doing. Sometimes the water gets away from you and you try and catch as much as you can. Hey, Riley. You want to take this one for me, please? No! Thank you, Riley. Then I just work the water up through to the ends of my hair. She is easily running her fingers through her hair. That does not happen with permed hair. And no perm I know of makes long straight hair stand on end like that. And I take my no rinse shampoo and squirt it also on the scalp, just a little bit, and rub it in. Again, kind of working it out to the ends. And sometimes I'll actually take my comb to help work it all the way to the ends. And I like to take my towel while I have the shampoo in there and just kind of work it because without standing under running water, you kind of need to use the towel a little bit to help get some of the dirt out. I like to follow that by a little more water. It's called no rinse shampoo, but I think it's best if you use a little water with it. Of course, there are bars all over the space station to help the ISS crew members stabilize their bodies in zero G free fall. So obviously her feet are under a bar but she is also stabilizing herself with her muscles. It actually feels kind of squeaky clean right now. Now I'll take the dry part of my towel. We use towels for quite a while here since we have limited supplies. We use them wisely. There, I think that's pretty good. And now as my hair dries, as the water evaporates from my hair, uh, it will uh, become humidity in the air and then our air conditioning system will collect uh, that into condensate and it won't be long and our water processing system will turn that into drinking water. Ow! I slapped my forehead too hard. <sighs> Humidity is water vapor. Water vapor is a gas that is present in the air because of evaporation. Yes, even on the ISS. Oh my God. Thank goodness this video is almost over. I don't know how much more of this I can take. At the end, I just do one final comb through to make sure there are no snarls and snags. And while it dries, I look, like to... Uh, let it stay stay free. I don't put it back in a ponytail while it's drying. And that is how I wash my hair in space on the International Space Station. Thank you to everyone who watched, especially those who stuck around till the end. If you did, I humbly apologize for putting you through the willful ignorance of the video maker. Wait, why am I apologizing? I didn't force you to sit through it all. That's on you. Psh, sorry, not sorry. Please consider becoming a Patreon. As little as $1 will help me grow and become even better. Thank you for watching. You are awesome. 
See you in the next video.